In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an interesting 20 by 20 flight controller. Now, many of you might be like, well, what the hell is so interesting about this one? And what's so different than any other 20 by 20? Well, this is an all-in-one F4 flight controller. Not only that, it even has an 8 volt regulator. Yeah, 8 volt. So let's get started. So in this video, we're going to be covering the connection guide, basically help you understand how to connect this because this is an F4. We'll also talk slightly about HGLRC because HGLRC has been going through a lot of changes and it's for the better for everybody. Even I've noticed it. Their micro quadcopters are insane. They come out tuned and they're just lasting a very great time, which is something really great. They've completely redesigned and rethought everything because they did have terrible quality at times or questionable quality at times. But in the recent days in their latest product lines they are really taking their time creating and developing these really nice boards as you can tell it even has conformal coating which costs them a little bit extra but it's also really nice to have because this adds a little bit of water resistance to the board which is also great you know it's just some it's an extra layer of security when you're buying this board basically but as you can tell the design is somewhat pretty unique in a way well it's not unique we're actually seeing this quite often now uh, we're seeing these double PCB boards. So we have our main power board and then we have our logic board separated here. Now this is very good. Um, I have yet to see any issues with any of these boards. But what this allows is it allows much larger copper traces inside. Just consider them as like fatter wires or bigger gauge wires inside the PCB uh, in order for you to get the best power delivery and least amount of resistance, which is something you always want with, all, with these all-in-one flight controllers. And they've actually tried to do that here and i am quite impressed and very happy that they've even managed to place an 8 volt regulator so it has a 5 volt 3 amp and a 1.5 amp 8 volt regulator and i think the dji fpv system can connect right into this so that is just phenomenal to be honest now the footprint is somewhat larger than other 20 by 20s but i think it's the smallest 20 by 20 aio footprint there is currently in the market which is also a huge addition if you know one that is slightly smaller than this let us know down in the comment section but don't forget this has everything it has osd mpu 6000 f4 even a barometer and we have an 8 volt and a 5 volt proper switching regulators here which is also something really nice to have not only that a connector if you wanted to do a 4-in-1 ESC even though that would defeat the whole purpose of all-in-one but they've stayed flexible in order to meet everybody's demand now let's begin the connection setup here so first we're gonna start off with the camera VTX then we're gonna do the receivers whether it's IBUS, SBUS, Spectrum we'll cover all of those all together even Crossfire if you're into that now let's get started with the camera here so the camera is gonna be a very straightforward process it's gonna go up in the front right here the first one right here we would have 5 volts which is the red wire for your camera ground is the black wire of your camera cam is the yellow wire of your camera we also have cam control here so if your camera has OSD wire you connect it right here and actually control it which is really really great now if you also needed for some reason battery voltage you can access that right there which is really nice that you know some people need that for something else and you have that available if you needed to now the 8 volt regulator is going to be right here then we have which is for example the video transmitter that's where you'd want to actually connect it because that'll be the most filtered part of the whole system for the video transmitter which is something you also want so the red wire of your video transmitter would go to the 8 volt right here then we have the black wire which is the ground then the yellow wire of your video transmitter would be right here now if you had smart audio or the trap protocol then you're going to want to go to tx2 so tx2 or uart2 will be the smart audio in the betaflight ports tab so keep that in mind that's where you'd want to enable it but i think it's already enabled by default so you should be good to go also something i forgot to mention earlier the orientation of the board it's supposed to be installed your quadcopter like this make sure you do that unless you know what you're doing because this is motor one motor 2, motor 3, and motor 4. We'll get into the ESC connection in a bit here. So now let's start with the receivers. The receivers are going to be connected right here. We'll start with SBUS. Now if you don't know this, this is an F4 flight controller. Now an F4 flight controller needs to have SBUS go on a specific pad. An IBUS can go on any pad except the SBUS pad. And usually they tell you that, sometimes they don't, but that's what I make these videos for. So let's start with SBUS, which is FR Sky. So if you have an FR Sky receiver, what you'd want to do is you want to put your SBUS signal right here. Very important you do that. 
and you want to put your 5 volt right here. Also here is very important because this pad for the 5 volt, once you plug in the USB, it'll actually give power, so you could bind it without plugging in the battery. So it's really great that they've even done that actually here. So that's also really great. And here we have another ground, which would be the black wire for your receiver. So black wire receiver, red wire receiver, and the SBUS signal wire right here, whatever color it might be. So these three. Now, if you also wanted smart port for your receiver, uh, which is basically telemetry, you'd want to set that up because they've inverted the TX1 right here. So you can get your smart port telemetry or inverted it. So you'll be totally fine in that perspective, which is also very thoughtful here. Now, moving to iBus connection, which is a uh, FlySky, uh, you'd still take your 5 volt from here, which is what I would do. My ground, which is the black wire from here, and I'd actually go all the way to RX1 right here. This is where I put my iBus signal, and then you should have a working uh, quadcopter with iBus. Now, if you're using Spectrum, what you'd want to do is you're going to want 3.3 volts, which is going to be uh, this guy right here. This would be the red wire. This would be the ground for your spectrum. And again, I would go to the RX1 pad right here and just set it all up in the configurations tab, telling it whether it's IBUS, SBUS, or spectrum, and you should be good to go. Next down the line, we're going to cover the ESCs. Now, uh, if you're using a 4-in-1 ESC, it's going to be a different story. You'd probably end up using this connector. But if you're not, you're going to want to use these. This is why the whole reason it's an all-in-one flight controller, which means the power distribution board is built into it. So it takes battery voltage and gives the ESCs power. These are single ESCs. So if you take a look at these pads, you'll see the plus. So if you had a single ESC, just imagine a little square right here. The red wire is this one, you know, the big fat one usually, and here's the black wire. I usually you have two smaller wires here. One is a ground, and one is the signal here. So here's the signal. So the signal is going to go to this S, which we usually is the white wire. Whatever that's not black or brown, that's what would go here from the smaller two wires. So you want that's where your signal would go. Then the fat black wire is going to go to the negative. And that's what she said. I'm just kidding. So the fat black wire is going to go to the minus right here. And the red fat wire will go here. Now sometimes you'll be left over with this little extra small black wire. What I recommend you do is you grab it and you twist it with the big fat black wire and you stick it right there and you do that same thing for all four sides. And again, make sure it's installed just like this so you don't run into any issues here. And you're still left with a bunch of UARTs and even sensor tabs. And again, you even have a barometer right there, which is actually pretty insane that they're able to fit everything on this board. They're just getting crazier and crazier now. And uh, something really nice. Ooh, this is really nice too. So check this out. These pads are split here and you can, you know, it makes it a little bit easier for you to add, for example, a low ESR capacitor, which is kind of needed. They don't provide that, so keep that in mind. I'll have links to a couple down below, which are really great, and you should definitely pick some up if you are going to be picking this up. Now, also something to take into consideration, the whole size is M2, so it's two millimeters here, and again, it is a 20 by 20. So just make sure you take note that the holes are M2, which are two millimeters. So again, just keep that in mind. And we have every other function we need, for example, our OSD, MPU 6000 gyro, which has a good gyro now, because there's no need for the ICM gyros anymore since we're capped at 8K PID and gyro update frequencies. So yeah, that's basically it. So overall, it's a really nice board. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section. If anybody's used it, also let us know down in the comment section. And everything's linked down below, and I think I'll have a coupon for this. So make sure you check the links down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.